Welcome to this worship service from First Presbyterian Church of Bryan. Tonight's service is the celebration of the Lord's Supper in Holy Week, the, the night the church has traditionally called Maundy Thursday, which is actually taken from the Latin word M-A-U-N-D-Y in English, the Latin word mandamo, which means to command. And then John's gospel version of this supper where Jesus teaches and washes feet in chapters 13, 14, and 15, you find that passage where Jesus says, I give you a new commandment. This I command you to love one another. So this Thursday night is known, this celebration of the Lord's Supper is known as Maundy Thursday. But instead of reading from John's Gospel 13, 14, and 15, the chapters, we're reading from Mark chapter 14, and the story will be told around this sharing of the Lord's Supper and the movement to Gethsemane will be from Mark chapter 14. Welcome to this service. Know that we also will meet at 6.30 Friday evening for the Good Friday service as there will be a remote uh, posting of that to our YouTube channel. And on Sunday morning, uh, you are invited to be at a worship service on the parking lot of 31st Street and Gordon Street for a 7.30 a.m. early service that is led by the youth of First Presbyterian. And at 10 a.m., at 10 a.m., which is 45 minutes earlier than usual, will be our mid-morning service at Easter, that time for Easter service only, 10 a.m. And there also will be a remote YouTube posting of that service. Friends, we are worshiping God. These are our opening sentences. In remembrance, we gather to be with the one who teaches us the meaning of faithfulness. In remembrance, we worship, lifting our voices to the one who calls us to love one another. In remembrance, we feast, breaking the bread which makes us whole, drinking the cup which fills us with grace. Reading from Mark chapter 14, beginning at verse 12, and the this, this story will, will weave around uh, as it's paraphrased for our storytelling and our hearing. Jesus and his disciples had come five days ago to the city of Jerusalem to celebrate the Jewish feast of Passover. 
They were on the outskirts of the city, sitting together on their first day, when his disciples asked him where they should plan to celebrate the feast together. So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. Meanwhile, the disciple Judas had been apart from them and meeting secretly with the chief priests of the temple, with plans to turn Jesus over to their authorities in exchange for money. The priests told him that when he could, give them the location and a time, and he would be compensated greatly. Later that evening, Judas rejoined the disciples. And when they had taken their places around the table and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were shocked by this and wondered who it could possibly be among them. Immediately in a panic, one after another, they said, Surely not I! He said to them, It is one of the twelve one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. The disciples continued to eat, uncertain of how to react to this news. Jesus now had their attention and chose his next words carefully. While they continued eating together, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup. After giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant of which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. The disciples knew Jesus had to leave them, but they did not yet know the details of the horrors that would come in the morning. over the sheet you were just reading on. <laughs> After they finished their meal, they went out to the Mount of Olives and Jesus warned them, you will all become deserters for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter, certain of his convictions and strong in his faith, said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you this day, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Peter did, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them, also feeling certain, promised the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, 
sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and he began to feel distressed and agitated. And he disclosed his grief and anxiety to them. He said to them as both disciples and supportive friends, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here, keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, what he knew was coming could be changed or avoided. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. After praying, he went to check on his disciples and found them sleeping. And he said with frustration to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake but one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, praying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up! We must get going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now Judas had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Judas made his way to where Jesus was standing there in the garden and he held his shoulders and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they seized him and arrested him. But one of the disciples who stood near to the scene drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of the disciples deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but desperate for his life, he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God. Friends, now we come around the table to remember the night that Christ shared the meal with his disciples. With whatever you have in your home at this time, we invite you to pause this video if you need to and grab either crackers or bread or whatever you might have to take communion with us this night. On this evening, when Jesus had gathered his disciples for his final, final meal, he chose his words with care, knowing that they would be among his last. We know and we have faith that Christ is alive, and we celebrate his great love for us in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. We remember his love, his teachings, and his grace. And we know the Lord is present with us at this table. Friends, let us come together in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for the life of Jesus Christ, your son, that he came to show us the way that we might follow in his footsteps, that we might know your love, which transcends all understanding and know that it was given to all of your children. God, we pray that on this night, in this solemn celebration, that we remember that Christ is always with us, 
but that Christ wants us to know this and be near to him always. Any time that we eat or drink, to remember that he gave of himself, that we might have a chance to know you and to live into you fully. Lord, we pray for all of your children around the world this night as they remember, that we all might remember you together. And we pray these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. This do as often as you eat it, remembering me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. When you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Friends, through this bread and this cup, we are drawn ever deeper into the presence of our Lord who loves us so dearly. Friends, remember, this is not a Presbyterian table. Even yours at home is no longer your table, but it is the Lord's table this night. Let us remember together. We invite you at this time, as uh, Pastor Ted and I here have our church COVID-friendly communions, to take the bread, whatever you have available to you. And together, let us remember Christ's sacrifice for us. And with whatever you may have, juice, wine, water, go ahead and take that up in your hands. And let us remember together the great love and grace and mercy that Christ has given us in his death and resurrection and a hope in new life. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. On this night, O oh God, when we remember that we indeed all do run away out of fear and anxiety and worry, that we all run away in denial of your claim upon us, we run away when the going gets tough. And yet, we have been invited to share a meal expressing our unity in you because your claim on us keeps us together in your love. How we give you thanks for that and we pray that as we go forward from Thursday through Friday and into the loneliness of Saturday to arrive again on the day of your resurrection, that your spirit would ever be with us. And not only with us, but of all, with all of your children near and far. For so we trust ourselves to your care, your shalom, your peace, which is beyond all understanding. In your name we pray, amen. amen.
to the world in the peace and grace of Jesus Christ, who is always with us, always in love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.